Hey folks, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Grad School Success Summit. Oh my gosh, 2021, it is year four. It's just amazing. I see a couple of folks in feed loop um, as people are joining the webinar. Welcome, just excited to have you. And we'll give folks just a few minutes to join. Um, but I see these numbers climbing. So welcome, welcome, welcome in. Let us know where you're coming from in the chat. Um, you can jump, drop it in the Q&A chat if you're on Zoom. Uh, and yeah, so excited. I'm like, I was telling Dr. Toyin before we started, like I need music. So we'll add that to uh, our next year edition. Uh, but welcome, welcome, welcome. So I just wanted to, before we get started, I don't want to take up too much of Dr. Toyin's time, but I wanted to just say hello. And thank you so much for joining you all this year. We have over a thousand people registered. I mean, my mind is blown by that number. Like, oh my gosh, so many people um, have decided to join the summit and be a part of it and build this, well, continue to build this amazing grad student community. And so I'm so happy that you're here and I'm so hopeful that you all get so much good information, um, get so much encouragement, motivation as we get ready for the next academic year and, and get prepped over the summer. So I'll take a couple liberties first to, uh, first to thank our sponsors, the first sponsor, our presenting sponsor, the professor is in, thank them so much for helping us bring this year's summit to life. Um, really, really helpful and just so supportive and shout out to Karen and Kale for all their help and even being a nice place to bounce ideas off of. And then to our sponsors, Bumble and Natra Dish for again, making the vision happen. And if you watch the video, the welcome video, you know I've already given a big thanks, but I cannot start the summit without thanking the summit planning team. These women have been with me for the last five or six weeks, organizing the summit, working hard to get these graphics out, to get the websites going, the event platform looking the way it does. And so I just wanna thank them so much um, for helping with executing this vision. Um, this is my first time working with a group and I couldn't trade any of them for the world. So ladies, thank you so much. And lastly, you are gonna love the summit. I know you are, but I just wanna encourage you to tag Black and Grad School, tag our speakers and use the hashtag GSSSS2021 when you are on Instagram and Twitter so people know about all the amazing things happening because they can register up until the summit is over. So they won't get the links for today's sessions but they will get the links for the sessions thereafter um, for Tuesday and Wednesday if they sign up today. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to introduce our speaker for tonight. Dr. Toyan has received her PhD in mathematics from the University of Alabama in 2016. And she now works as a full-time senior lecturer at the University of Georgia. And she started the Academic Society to help graduate students succeed in grad school through time management, productivity, and self-care. She reaches thousands of grad students through her digital programs, online social platforms, YouTube channel, and website. With that said, Dr. Toyan, thank you so much for coming today and I will give it away to you. Thank you so much, Alante. And hi, everyone. Welcome to the summit. I'm so excited to be sharing with you all. I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. And I think you all can see it. I'm gonna close the Q&A. I will take questions um, at the end. So if you do have a question that pops up as we're going through it, just put it in the Q&A section. And I know Elante is gonna help me out at the end to um, answer all of your questions. But yeah, I'm gonna talk about procrastination and burnout today. And so if you've ever experienced procrastination, you know how difficult it can be to stop procrastinating and actually get back to work. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Like, where does this procrastination come from? How do you overcome it? And how do you actually sit back down and do the work that you need to do to succeed in grad school? So first, I just want to say congratulations. You have been accepted to grad school because you're here and I'm so excited for you in this new journey. 
um, that you are partaking on. And if you're anything like me, you're excited to get started, but you're a little nervous and you want to make sure you do everything right. So if you've already been accepted to grad school, you've likely already sent your thank you letters out to your letter writers and people who helped you along the way. You've read through all of the student information you've gotten, like your offer letter, um, your the information from your department, information from the graduate school in general. You've likely created an action plan for your first semester, like how are you going to handle these finances? Where are you going to live? What are you going to do as soon as you get to your new city? You've probably created a list of suggestions and advice. So maybe when you got accepted to grad school, you started Googling, you know, what do you do in grad school? What is it like? How to prepare? Maybe you found my videos. Maybe you found Alante's podcast. And so I always found it helpful to just like create a list of all of these suggestions and advice because maybe not everything is relevant right now but it will be relevant in the future. So having that list documented and saved, you can always go back to it when you need it. And then finally, you've probably made a vow to do your best and not give up, All right? And so the first month of grad school is great because you're excited to be there and you're excited to finally be able to just really focus on a subject that you're actually interested in. instead of all of these like extra classes you have to take everything is pretty much directly related to your field or your research or part of your degree program and you really want to make a good impression on your professors and the fellow grad students in your program so you're happy to do the work right working on all the assignments that you have because you really want to do your best so you're working 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 and you just want to get it done and get it done well no matter how long these assignments take you to do so the first month of grad school is very exciting, but after the first month, you may hit one or all three of what I'm calling the big three, right? So the big three is where you kind of hit that like roadblock and it kind of takes a lot of grad students off course, right? It's like a stumbling block and I'm calling the big three failure, imposter syndrome, overwhelm. So let's say, first month of grad school has gone by and you realize, okay, grad school is a little different um, than what I'm used to. Maybe the assignments aren't as straightforward as I thought. Like I thought I was doing A work, but I'm making C's on my assignments. Maybe you're not understanding exactly what your professors are looking for. So you don't do as well as you expect on your assignments. Maybe you even fail an assignment or two. And so I'm going to talk about failure a little more, but I just want to let you know that failure is a part of the grad school experience. Everyone experiences failure in grad school, and it's not those failures that actually define you as a grad student. It's really how you overcome those failures. My mom also has her PhD, and she always told me, oh yeah, that's the grad school thing. Like, you just have to make it through like as long as you don't give up you're doing it well right so we just don't want to give up no matter what kind of failure that we see then we have our friend imposter syndrome where it feels like oh no i'm actually a fraud here and i don't want everyone to figure out that i don't belong in grad school and it feels like you're the only one who's struggling and like everyone else has a stronger background than you everybody else has it all figured out that's not true. Everyone struggles with imposter syndrome in some kind of way. And so I do want to say like, as a grad student, I wanna put the emphasis on student, right? You are a student, you are there to learn. So you do not need to know all of the things. If you don't understand something or you don't know a word, ask a question, right? You're supposed to be learning. If you already knew everything, you would have the degree already. And then finally, to round out the big three, we got overwhelm, where you feel like you're constantly working on assignments, you're constantly reading, constantly writing, always on the edge of the next deadline. Maybe you have to pull an all-nighter or work nonstop until you burn out. This is the big three, right? When all of this hits you at once, it's like, ah. Oh. And this is where a lot of grad students stumble. And this is where we get into this procrastination burnout cycle. 
All right, so I call it a procrastination burnout cycle because I think it is a cycle that you just kind of get stuck in this loop. All right, so because of that victory, so because of the previous failures, maybe imposter syndrome and overwhelm, you start to feel kind of like defeated and you become unmotivated and you don't really feel like starting your next assignment because you kind of feel like you know what's gonna happen and so you just wanna avoid it. So you procrastinate because, you know, a lot of us say this, oh, I do my best work under pressure anyway. I think that's a lie. <laughs> so I'm calling you out now. Um, but so you procrastinate and you don't start working on your assignment until the last minute. But that means since you waited until the last minute, you have to do a lot of work all at once. Right? Maybe you have to work all night to get it done or just like have a really, really busy week. So of course you're going to burn out and then you're going to have to recover, which means when you get that next assignment, you kind of remember the trauma of the burnout. You're like, oh my goodness, I remember the last assignment. I was working all night. I burned out, so I don't want to do this again. So I'm going to avoid it. And you, you procrastinate and the cycle just continues and continues, right? And so it's really hard to get out of this procrastination burnout cycle. All right, so I'm going to teach you how to get out of that today. So I'm Toyin, nice to meet you. I am a former McNair scholar. I got my PhD in math. I'm now a senior lecturer. I was a lecturer, I was promoted this past year. And I'm also the founder and content creator at the Academic Society. And I really started the Academic Society to help grad students be able to handle like the program. And I really believe that time management, productivity, self-care are just so important. And so that's a lot of what I talk about in the academic society. And tonight I'm here to help you overcome procrastination in grad school so you can actually get your work done, right? So that you can actually do the work to get the degree. So I have a question. Have you ever struggled with procrastination? Most of us have, right? Um, but also, is it a weekly battle? So if you're already, if you've already been in grad school, did you find that you struggled with procrastination every week? If you have not started grad school yet in undergrad, did you str struggle with procrastination in undergrad? All right, I know I definitely struggled with it when I was in grad school, but something that really helped me was to call out procrastination for what it actually is. Procrastination is a form of self-sabotage, right? So self-sabotage happens when we keep our own selves away from reaching the next step or the next success or the next level because we're afraid because we're experiencing, we're experiencing something uncomfortable, right? And grad school is uncomfortable. You are going to be outside of your comfort zone. So it makes sense to want to like cling to that comfort, right? Because you're so like fish out of water. And so it's completely normal to want to self-sabotage, right? It's completely normal. All right. And the way that self-sabotage typically shows up in grad school is through procrastination. So let's talk about what that can look like. All right, so what can procrastination look like in grad school? Well, it can look all kinds of ways. This is kind of how it sometimes shows up for me. So let's say you have a paper due tomorrow, but you think, oh my goodness, my apartment is a mess and I just cannot be productive when my apartment is a mess. So I'm gonna spend this time cleaning my apartment. That's procrastination. Or maybe you know that you need to update your advisor on your research, but you like are avoiding your advisor. And so you think, well, if I really wanna get good research done, I need to make sure that my desktop isn't a mess. I need to be able to find all of my articles. So I'm gonna organize all of my articles into folders on my desktop. And that's really gonna help me. Procrastination. Okay, what about final exams? Final exam starting the next week, you got a whole weekend to study. You're not gonna spend all weekend studying. So, you know, you can watch something on Netflix, but of course you're gonna choose a TV show with like 18 episodes per season where each episode ends on a cliffhanger. So you have to watch the next one, right? That is procrastinating. Or maybe like your work conditions aren't perfect. Maybe you think I'm gonna go study at a coffee shop, but the only table is like right in the sun. 
all right, there's no way I can be productive in the sun. So I'll just pack up and work at another time, but you never actually specify the time. That's kind of how procrastination kind of shows up for me, especially when I was in grad school and it can look a lot of different ways. All right, but on the other side of procrastination, when you actually do the work and get your work done and complete your assignment, you realize, oh, this wasn't bad. I could have started this like three days ago, right? Why does that happen? Why is it always better once you actually start to do the work? Like, how do you actually start to do the work? And so a lot of people think, oh, well, maybe if I could manage my time better, I won't procrastinate. And this is actually a myth. People think that time management is the answer. And even me, someone who is like in love with time management and teach time management, better time management skills is not going to um, prevent you from procrastinating, especially if you're just feeling so unmotivated to get your work done. So we really have to figure out like, what's the motivation here? All right, so I have this um, quote from a therapist who says, procrastination manifests itself in how we manage time, but it's not primarily about how we manage time. That sounds the same. I'm going to read it again. Okay, it says, procrastination man manifests itself in how we manage time, but it's not primarily about how we manage time. So it looks like when we procrastinate, it looks like we don't know how to manage our time. But that's not really what procrastination is all about. That's just how it shows up. So it's not all doom and gloom and note, I'm usually a very positive person. It feels very doom and gloom right now, but there is hope. So the good news is that procrastination is just an avoidance strategy, right? And it's caused by a number of factors. We'll talk about them, but the good news is that it's a strategy, right? So how do you find a solution to procrastination when procrastination is a strategy? Well, you just do a new strategy. So all we have to do is apply a new strategy. So I'm gonna talk about some strategies that you can apply to help you overcome your procrastination. All right, shall we get into it? All right, so I've identified five reasons why we procrastinate in grad school. These are very specific to me and you'll probably notice some of these things happen to you in grad school. So these reasons include task aversion, lack of confidence, fear of failure, there's that failure again, perfectionism, advisor professor relationships. And so we're gonna dig into each one of these, talk about why it happens, and I'll give you something that I like to do to help me overcome these things. All right, so let's talk about task aversion. Okay, so task aversion is when you avoid doing something because you don't value it, right? You think it's a waste of your time. And in grad school, you're gonna have a lot of different responsibilities and not all of them are gonna be directly related to your research or getting your degree. Maybe you have to be a TA, maybe you have to do grading, maybe you do admin work, but there's gonna be some things that you feel like kind of a waste of time. And so it's easy to avoid these tasks, right? Maybe this task you don't see like the bigger picture for, or you don't understand the application of the assignment for your future career. All right, so without a strong motivation to complete the task at hand, you end up avoiding it altogether. So this happens to me even as a faculty member. So I teach math and you know, I make connections with students and then students come up to me and ask me for a letter of recommendation, right? This letter of recommendation is really important to the student, but in the grand scheme of, of things for my job, it's not really important for me. I'm not going to not get promoted because I didn't write a letter of recommendation. I don't have to do it. It's very important for the student, but personally for me in my career, writing a letter of recommendation it's not that important to me. So, and that kind of sounds bad, right? But when a student asks me for a recommendation, I'm happy to do it because I know that student and I'm excited about helping them reach the next level and what they want to do. But I noticed that 
I always kind of wait till the last minute to do it, right? I avoid doing that task because I have other things to do like teaching classes, grading things, um, other departmental things, right? So how do I actually write down a letter of recommendation? I've noticed that when I actually sit down to do it, takes me max 30 minutes, right? No time at all. So what I started doing was, I just started giving myself a small window of time to do it. And that helped to motivate me because it gave me this like sense of urgency, like I needed to get it done and urgency outside of the deadline, right? So what I would do is I would uh, maybe say, I have a meeting at 1030. I'll say, oh, I got some time between 10 and my meeting, I'm gonna write this letter of recommendation, right? And so it's really easy for me to focus because I know I need to leave to go to my meeting. So one way that you can combat task aversion is to give yourself a small window of time to get it done, to like increase that urgency and that urgency can uh, motivate you to actually do it. All right, next, the other reason is lack of confidence. And this can very much be related to our friend imposter syndrome. Um, but sometimes we wanna procrastinate on our work because we doubt that we're able to do it, right? It's kind of scary for us to try to do. And so that's kind of the nature of grad school. You're challenged to do things you've never done. You're learning things you haven't learned about before. You're getting very deep into a specific topic that you've ne you never knew was so deep, right? And so when we're doing these new things, we don't always feel like we can do them or we can't do it on our own. We feel like that and we have that lack of confidence. And so instead of you know reaching out to someone and asking for help, Instead, we struggle to get started and we procrastinate. So when I'm feeling a lack of confidence about something or making a decision or getting started on a project and I just can't figure out how to get started, I like to talk to somebody about it. I will call my friend Caitlin, who I went to grad school with, and I would say, this happened literally two weeks ago. It's like, I can't figure out what to do. I just need you to listen to me talk about this. And just talking it through, I was able to come up with a plan for myself that made so much sense. I was able to even like figure out like, oh, this other thing that I was doing, thinking about doing is not even an issue, right? So the recommendation is to talk through why something is so confusing to you. And a pro tip would be to ask someone who's done this thing before. Maybe it's another grad student in your program. Maybe it's your advisor. Remember you are a grad student, right? You can ask for help. All right, so next we have the fear of failure, right? And so fear of failure is like, you think that if you fail and don't achieve your goal, horrible things are going to happen, right? <laughs> and like I mentioned, failure happens in grad school. Everyone experiences failure. The key is how do you overcome it? So if you're afraid of the consequences of failing, then the next logical step, logical step would be to avoid doing that thing, right? You can't fail at what you never do, except you got to get it done, right? This is grad school. You want that degree, right? Why did you go to grad school? You got to get it done. So you can't avoid it because you're afraid of failure. So there's a lot of ways that you can overcome failure. I'll list a few here. Something that helps me is just to get all the data, right? Analyze all the possible outcomes. What happens if I actually try? What happens if I try and it actually works out? What happens if I do fail? Are they gonna kick me out of the program? Probably not. What happens if I ask my professor for help? What happens if I talk to another grad student about it? What are all these potential outcomes? And then also think more positively. What's the best case scenario? What could happen if you actually tried? And then negatively look at the worst case scenarios. Maybe it's not that bad, right? I used to come up with backup plans all the time in grad school. I remember I'm, I was in a PhD program and I was preparing for my qualifying exams, which say, you know, if you pass them, you're a PhD candidate. If you fail them twice, you're kicked out of the program with a master's. And I was like, I can get a master's, you know, a master's won't be so bad and I can teach at a community college. It'll be fine, right? So um, having a backup plan at every stage may be helpful for you. And really just don't give up right? Don't give up. You want to make it through this program, and I am rooting for you to make it through the program. 
All right, next we have perfectionism. I know there are probably a lot of perfectionists in this group. <laughs> and this is just like the refusal to accept anything short of perfection. <laughs> and uh, we don't really get the luxury of being a perfectionist in grad school. Sometimes you just got to get things done, whether it's perfect or not. Sometimes done is better than perfect. And sometimes the actual process of doing the thing is more important than the out outcome being perfect. So a perfectionist will often put off attempting a task until they know for sure that they're going to get it perfect and meet their high expectations. But we don't have that much time in grad school, right? Maybe you got multiple things due this week and you don't have time to make an assignment perfect, right? In grad school, it can be impossible to make something perfect and reach your overly high expectations for yourself. So I'm going to say, you know, let the perfectionism go when, in, when you're in grad school and just really try to do the best you can. So what do you do when you're feeling like, oh my goodness, I can't even start this thing. I just... I just can't start, right? You just have to force yourself to take action. And so one way that I like to do that is to reverse engineer my goals. And so for example, maybe you are writing like a research paper or something and you just can't force yourself to sit down and write. Well, what's the first step? Like, is it an outline? Or maybe it's like background research. Or maybe it's just like a brain dump. Like, can you sit down and just like brain dump some ideas? All right, brain dump some ideas. Okay, well, what's the next step? Well, maybe research to see if these are good ideas. All right, what's the next step? Okay, well, maybe you can outline. So maybe just doing it one step at a time can help you actually get started instead of just being paralyzed. All right, so then finally we have advisor or prof uh, professor relationship. So when you avoid your advisor or your professor. Okay, so maybe you have an uneasy relationship between your advisor or a professor. Like maybe you just don't really like your professor. You don't like the way they teach. It doesn't connect with you. You feel like you can just get this information from a book at home. I'll let you know, if you're not in the education department, most professors are not trained in teaching, right? I'm a math professor. I've never taken an education class. Somehow I'm good at teaching, but that is not the case for every professor. So you may have a professor who is terrible at teaching and you feel like it's just against you. <laughs> it's like they personally don't like you, so they're not going to teach you in a way that helps you learn. Or maybe your advisor gives you harsh feedback and it's like, they hate me. They don't think I'm smart because their feedback is so harsh, right? And so if you do have like this uneasy relationship with your advisor or your professors, it makes you feel like, I don't want to work on this thing, especially if I have to talk to them to do it. Now, I will say as a like note, an uneasy relationship is not the same as a toxic relationship or one that's unhealthy or harmful to your mental health. That is a completely different thing. And I highly recommend reaching out to someone and talking about that. But if the uneasy relationship is very surface level, I would recommend just taking a little bit of time to journal it out. Why are you feeling uneasy about your relationship? Does it even have anything to do with that professor? Does it have anything to do with you? Is there any way that you can like navigate your interactions so you can avoid major triggers? I know for me, I had a great advisor, but I was so nervous that he was gonna think that I wasn't doing enough work or I wasn't taking my research seriously. And so I felt like I would want to avoid our um, advisor meetings, but I, I just thought I was like, how can I make myself feel like my advisor knows that I'm doing the work. So I like came up with this whole like way of meeting my advisor. It's like a my advisor meeting template really where I would um, take notes in our meetings and like ask him what he wanted me to do for the next week and I would work on them and even if I got nothing done and had trouble the whole way, I would like write questions down related to what I was struggling with. So in our next meeting, I could say, all right, here's what we did last time. Here's what you asked me to do. Here's what I tried. And this is what I have questions about. And then he'll answer my questions. I'll take notes and then he'll give me something else to continue working on the next week. And our meetings just went so smoothly. And I really felt like, he didn't think that I was not doing my work. And that's all I really cared about. 
All right, so we just went through five reasons why we may procrastinate in grad school, as well as some recommendations, some practical things to do to stop procrastinating. But once you stop procrastinating, how do you actually get your work done? How do you sit down and actually force yourself to do the work? How do you motivate yourself to do it? Because that lack of motivation, especially after one month in, can be very real. All right, so I think you need three things to be able to get your work done. Um, prioritization, structure, and accountability, right? So prioritization, it takes a bit of practice to get it right. So you may not be perfect at prioritizing things immediately, but you'll get better the more you do it. All right, so prioritization is just being able to recognize which goals and tasks are most important and then determining how long to spend working on them. All right, so notice that was two things. Which things are more important? How long are we gonna spend on them? It's important to um, consider the time. Also structure, right? I am. I always say, don't just let grad school happen to you. Don't wait until you have an assignment due to actually decide when you're going to work. Create a weekly schedule, a weekly routine, workflows that optimize how you work with your goals. And then accountability, following through. I always say like, um, people like to set goals, right? But somehow they never follow through. I think the bridge to actually follow through on your goals is the accountability. And in grad school, I think it's really important to set up accountability measures to make sure that you get your work done. All right, so let's go into these things more deeply. All right, so prioritization. Remember I said you will not be perfect at it immediately, but it's a good thing to start practicing to do. All right, so I would say we have two things, goal setting and to-do lists, right? So how do you know what to prioritize? Is based on the goals that you set for your first semester of grad school. So I recommend choosing only two, two main goals for your first semester of grad school or for your next semester of grad school. What two things are you gonna say are most important this semester? Like, is it just like understanding the material in your classes? Is it making connections with fellow grad students? Is it making progress on your research? Is it a certain GPA? What are your two goals? And these goals are really important because inevitably in grad school, you're gonna to get to a point after month one probably where everything is coming at you like so many responsibilities and you have a lot of deadlines that are happening all at once and you can't decide what you should be working on because you need to be working on everything and so you kind of like shut down because you're like paralyzed like i don't know what to do that's what the two goals are for when you are overwhelmed and you don't know what to do first go back to your goals you should do those two things first because that is what you have decided when you're in a clear state of mind, you already decided this is important, right? And not everything in grad school has the same level of importance, right? So choosing those two goals from the beginning is gonna be really helpful when you get overwhelmed. And then I highly re recommend making a to-do list every single day. I like to take a moment and sit for maybe like five minutes, visualize what I want my day to look like, and then write my to-do list for the day. Not every to-do list is created equally, okay? There are to-do lists that can actually make you unproductive, right? So my tips for to-do lists are to keep them short, right? Three to five things, not a list of 10 to 20 things because when you have too many things on a to-do list, it makes you a little overwhelmed. And I read something that's like, if you have a really long to-do list, that makes you more likely to not do any of the things. So keep it short three to five things, things that you can actually realistically do that day. If you can't finish it that day, then the remainder of the task should belong on tomorrow's to-do list, right? And next, prioritize the list. So don't just write down everything you need to do and then say, all right, this is my to-do list. I'm gonna start at the top. Again, not everything has the same level of importance. I like to choose three priorities on my to-do list where I look at everything and say, if I do nothing else but these three things today, what three things do I wanna have done? That's gonna go to the top of the list. That's gonna be my priorities because I personally will feel productive for getting those two things done. 
instead of having a whole list starting at the top and then never getting to it. All right, so that brings to the next thing. Include times on your to-do list, right? You can make it fancy, add time limits on there. And you can do it by um, adding like maybe do this task, do this task for two hours. You can do times like that for how long you wanna work on it. Or you can do start times. Like I'm gonna work on this and then at one o'clock, I'm gonna move on to the next task, right? Because what often happens is we, um, under overestimate we underestimate how much time things take so we're working on task one and we end up just working on it all day and doing nothing else but if we include time it's like i have to start this next thing by two o'clock you can pause task one do other things so you can actually get stuff done and then come back to task one when you're ready and then finally a big mistake i see is to do lists like the task being too big like People will write like, work on research paper. Like, are you gonna get your research paper done today? Probably not. And it's kind of defeating to have something on your to-do list and you don't finish it that day. So you have to put it on your to-do list tomorrow and you don't finish it and you have to put it on your to-do list the next day. I like to have things on my to-do list that I can actually get done for the day because it makes me feel good. It makes me feel productive and accomplished and it just, it's better for my mental health, right? So I like to break things into subtasks like things that can actually be done today, right? So the research paper, you're just not gonna sit down and write it. Maybe you need to collect your resources, that's a task. Brain dump, that's a task. Outline, that's a task. Get it proofread, that's a task. Like these are things you can actually do in one day. I know that's a lot, I love to-do lists, so I have a lot to say about them. All right, next, let's go on to structure. So a weekly schedule, so important. Like I said, don't just let grad school happen to you. Don't just say, I'm gonna start working on this assignment once it's assigned. We need a schedule. We need to condition our body to be like, at this time, I'm gonna be working. So I highly recommend creating a weekly schedule that includes your me time, as well as hobbies, when you're gonna be working in your classes. So the way that I like to create my schedule is in three steps. So first I like to do my fixed tasks. So these are things like classes and meetings that I have to do at the same time every week. Then I put in my me time and my hobbies. Like these are the things that I need for me to refresh myself. And the reason why I put this in before my work time is because when I get super busy, my me time is going to be the first to go. That's why it's important to actually schedule it. And then after the me time is scheduled, then I put in my work time. And I put them in in productivity chunks. So productivity chunks are like two to five hour chunks of time that you dedicate to being um, productive. So I don't like to be super specific with my schedule and say at three o'clock, I'm going to work on this specific class because what if you don't have an assignment for this specific class? Are you just not going to do any work that day? Or what if like some other work goes over and you don't have time to get to the thing? Are you going to feel bad by not following your schedule? Right, so I like to do productivity shots because that adds a little more flexibility where I just say, during this time, I'm gonna be productive. No matter what I do, I'm gonna do something productive and that really helps me. All right, and then finally we have our accountability. Remember that's the bridge between setting goals and actually following through on those goals. So I highly recommend an accountability partner. So this is a member of your cohort or just another grad student who's at a similar stage in grad school as you. You can meet weekly at the beginning of the week, say, all right, here's the week ahead. This is what I plan on doing. Hold me accountable for doing this thing. At the end of the week, maybe just text. Did you do the thing? And you'll say yes or no. And hopefully having that person and you see them actually doing work is gonna like make you wanna actually participate and do work. You don't wanna have to show up every week and say, no, I didn't do what I said I was gonna do. You know, that other person is gonna help hold you accountable. And then I highly, highly, highly recommend co-working sessions. You can do this in person or virtually. And so what I like to do is I like to work with someone side by side or work on Zoom together and use the Pomodoro technique. And this is just like a productivity tool where um, you work for a specific amount of time, take a break, 
work for a specific amount of time, take a break. I like to do either 30 minute sessions or 45 minute sessions and take a 10 to 15 minute break. And so the nice thing, this is what I do in all my programs for Pomodoro techniques, I would say, at the beginning say, all right, what are you working on for this Pomodoro? So this 45 minutes, only choose one thing, one task. So you can like narrow in and zoom in and focus on that one thing without getting distracted because it's time bound, right? After 45 minutes, are you gonna be done? So if you're done in 45 minutes, great, take a break, move on to the next task for the next 45 minutes. If you're not done in 45 minutes, you just have to carry that goal on to the next Pomodoro. And that can be a great way to um, add times to your to-do list and say, oh, this task should take me two Pomodoros. This task will take me one Pomodoro, things like that. I really like doing that. Okay, so we've talked about procrastination, how to get your work done, but what do you do now while you're waiting to start grad school? How do you mentally prepare yourself for your first or next semester of grad school? I recommend start planning now. Read through the syllabi. So if you know what classes you're gonna be taking, find the syllabus. So um, typically someone in the office may have old syllabi for classes. Maybe you can ask your professor. It's likely they may not have written a syllabus yet, but you can start looking at past ones to see if there's anything that occurs every semester that you should be reading. Start a healthy sleep schedule. Maybe you're not a morning person, but you know you probably should become one to be productive in grad school. Start changing that schedule now learn about your new city. Like how long will it take to get to your school? What restaurants are there around the department that you can go and have lunch? Reading ahead, highly recommend reading ahead. So read assigned articles and books, read your advisor's publications, learn about their research. I also recommend determining what your priorities and non-negotiables will be. Like your hobbies, hanging out with family, going out to eat, watching a movie, like how often do you need to do these things? It's important to like figure out that now before your life gets too hectic and you're like, how can I even squeeze that in, right? And then finally, um, understand that grad school is temporary. It's not forever. It's two, one, five, seven years. It's not the rest of your life, right? It's not forever. Um, people always ask me like, what do you tell your friends and family when you're not talking to them? And I would say, I had these really close friends in high school. We all went to grad school and we did not talk to each other. But then after we finished grad school, we're like the best of friends again. And we were able to rebuild our friendship, right? Because grad school wasn't forever. <laughs> and we all understood like, this is just a temporary thing. And it's really important to connect with your why. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you going to grad school? Because if your why is deep enough, it's gonna help to like motivate you. Anytime you're feeling down, discouraged, remember why you're doing this and connect with that because that will get you through the tough times. All right, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening and best wishes in grad school. I do have a YouTube channel, the Academic Society with Toy and Ali. And so down here, I've recommended a playlist on my YouTube channel. It's called Grad School Prep and it has all the things you should do to prepare for grad school. Uh, that was amazing, Dr. Toyin. Thank you so much. I you all twitter is a lot hot okay i think i easily did 30 40 tweets um from all the gems you dropped so thank you thank you thank you let's get into q a i saw a bunch of questions popping in and people are upvoting so we i'm gonna go with things that people are really interested in um someone asks what if the professor doesn't think much about you but does have favorite students do you have any advice for how they can maybe manage that uneasy or unsavory uh, relationship. So if it seems like, you know, there's some favoritism going on, that will definitely happen. There's always like star students in the class. It's like, oh my goodness, they love that student. <laughs> I would say get to know that student <laughs> and be known as a friend of that student. Go to office hours with that student so you can get all the nuggets of wisdom from that professor. Um, I would say it's probably nothing against you it's just maybe they like that student's drive. They like what the student has to say in class. Um, 
Yeah, I, I personally, I would just befriend the student and learn everything that that student is learning from the professor. Also, I would talk with the professor and just um, make sure that everything you're doing in class is like the goal of the class like what is the goal of this class get an idea from your professor like what they're looking for and maybe how you can improve like if you get um feedback on an assignment or something you can always go back and ask oh i noticed that i got points off um is there something that i should do differently for the next assignment you can always ask these things yeah i, I love that i think that's perfectly right another question is what productivity tools do you use paper and pen trello asana google tasks what's your favorite go-to all the things so i like to have a notepad this is my to-do list from today um i like to highlight things that are my priorities um so i have a notepad for a to-do list i have paper planner just so i can see everything at a glance and i also use trello to keep things digitally so i think it's important to have both digital and paper planners i think yeah that's kind of what my like toolkit is yeah okay love it so you all hear that maybe you need both right it's not a, it's not a either or it's an and so what if you have multiple goals right like losing weight getting a's getting your thesis done what what kind of advice do you have for individuals who maybe can't decide between a lot of competing um important goals you gotta make a tough decision something's on the chalk top and block like if you have a lot of goals you can probably only make a little progress on each one so would you rather make a little progress on every goal or would you actually like to achieve two goals? So I'd say you, you, you gotta choose, you gotta decide what's important. And like, if you feel like two goals, like you have been managing two goals for like a couple months, maybe you can throw in another one after you have shown to yourself that you can handle having two goals. I think that's great. Oh, I love it. You know, and I love these fire answers so we can get through there are lots of questions coming in. Um, what do you do if you're waiting for feedback from a professor who hasn't responded to your emails or texts? I'm still waiting for a thesis feedback a month later. This person is an admin. They're this admin. person is a what? They're an admin. They're the dean. Oh, deans are really busy, especially like in like a transition, like getting new students in type of here, like a summer, deans are really busy. So I would say, is there someone else that you can get feedback from, from the time being, or is there any way that you can make getting feedback from the dean easier? Like, can you like bring them lunch one day or just pop up at the office or like ask the person in the office, when are they free? I'm gonna need this spot, <laughs> you know? I think you gotta be a little creative, but also if, I feel, so I think this is important uh, when thinking about choosing advisors, you kind of want someone who's not super busy. Like, I don't know if this person is your advisor or not, but you kind of want to choose someone who's not going to be super busy and have time for you. But if this person is not an advisor, um, I think maybe ask someone else. Perfect. Okay. Someone um, also asks, how many classes do you recommend taking each semester while working full time? Do you have any advice for that? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I would say for me in math, normal, like a full time schedule is three classes. So I would probably say if you're also working full time, maybe one or two classes, but it probably depends on the field. Like maybe some fields take five or seven classes in grad school. So I would figure out what's normal for grad students in your program and maybe one less than that, maybe. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> okay, someone, you're getting lots of love. I'm trying to save that to the end and there was another question, but you, I just want you to know that the people are showing you so much love. Someone else is asking, how about preparing for those oral exams and dissertation defense? Should Can we use those same strategies you shared to do those two major grad school milestones? Oh yeah, so um, I would say, I didn't have an oral, but I did have, um, qualifying exams, which are like comprehensive exams, which are like four hours exams that I had to take back to back. So one after the other, and I just had one summer to prepare. I like blocked off the whole summer. I started uh, studying for one subject um, for the first two weeks, because I like to have that singular focus. And then I studied for the second subject, the second two weeks. And then in the last two weeks, I kind of did like one day, then the other. And then at the week of, I did like in the morning, this subject, and then in the afternoon, this subject. I'm not good at like switching back and forth. I, you'll notice I'm like singularly focused when I'm doing things. I also had an accountability partner. My friend Caitlin was preparing 
for the exam as well. So we studied in the same room together. Older grad students gave us like packets of their study materials as well as like old qualifying exams. So we had resources from other people as well. So I would say ask around, ask the older grad students how they prepared, get an accountability partner at the same stage as you so you can prepare together, even if you're studying different things because me and my friends were studying different subjects and then block out the time to do it. Yes. Um, here's another upvoted question. What's your advice on assignments or projects that take longer to finish, but you still have other work to do? Sometimes I have moments where the work takes longer than expected and I wanna finish before the deadline. So maybe kind of get in that situation. What do you recommend? Yeah, I would say that becomes like a big project, like a big goal. Like this is like my goal for the week is to finish this thing. So I would map out like how much time you wanna spend on this thing for the week and then how much time are you gonna spend on everything else? So maybe mornings are devoted to the thing and then evenings are devoted to everything else. It's really hard to like flip back and forth. So it, as much as you can have focus time on one thing and maybe like block out your schedule, that would be my recommendation. But then also decide, is the big thing that you're working on, is that super important or are or, or your other assignments more important than that? Like is something, is there something that you could actually get an extension on? That might be something you need to ask about. Yes, yes. Another one that was upvoted and I think is really important. What if you're paranoid about sharing your goals with others? Like I need to complete my research paper or get sources, but I feel like there's competition between me and my classmates. Hmm, I think that's no fun. Um, one thing I loved about my department, it was not competitive at all. And I don't know if that's just the nature of math or if other programs are different. We were not competitive at all. We worked on assignments together. We read through everyone's stuff. So I think it's really helpful to have people to confide in. So if you can't find it in um, your cohort, go to a different department, like not transfer, but like find a grad student in a different department. Also, I have a virtual community on Facebook. So many grad students, talk to them, talk to somebody about it. Like, don't just keep it to yourself. If you feel you can't talk to your cohort, find somebody else to talk about it with. Totally agree. Um, someone else asks, it's been hard to maintain productivity while starting school virtually in the pandemic. So how do you navigate staying productive when your home, school, office comfort is all in one place? Yes, accountability. Literally, I do not get any work done without my accountability partner. We get on Zoom every single morning and we work together. If she was not working with me, I would be on the couch watching Netflix every single day. So I have a program where the grad students in there, they work together every single day. They put a little post in the Facebook group saying who's working a day and then people are like, I'll join you. So accountability, find somebody to work with. That's my tip. Yes. Um, and then uh, what this, this kind of was a perfect kind of a jumping point from that last point is like, how do you determine which workflow or like work times are best for you? How do you, how did you figure that out? Yeah, trial and error. You have to know yourself. I learned that I'm a morning person. Like I didn't realize that because I love sleep. I just have to go to bed early to get a lot of sleep. So I get my most productive work done in the morning. So you have to test it out and try working in the morning, try working in the afternoon, try working in the evening and figure out like when do you feel most productive and try to schedule your study sessions and work sessions during those times. Yes. Um, oh my, okay, you all are upvoting. So then I see one and I lose it, but it was a really great question. Oh, okay, here it is. What's the best way to create many deadlines for assignments that are so much longer than undergrad, right? Having something that's a semester or two away doesn't feel urgent, even when the thing is a lot. Yes, that is so hard, especially for me. This was later in grad school when I wasn't taking any courses. I just had research to do and nobody was telling me to work on it every week. And I actually didn't really do my research for a while. I was like in love with teaching. So I was spent all my time teaching my classes. But then I was like, you know, teaching my class is not going to help me graduate. I got to do this research. So I started coming into my office at 7.30 a.m. and spend the first half of the day, well, I just from 7.30 to 10 a.m. working on my research. Then I would go to the gym and work out and then come back and do teaching stuff. So that worked for me. Um, I find with a lot of grad students I work with, they just need someone to 
hold them accountable, right? Maybe have a planning session with someone and say, all right, we're gonna be working on our research or writing um, all month. How many days are we gonna do it? Three days a week, how many hours? Four hours on three days a week and you work together. Again, it's that accountability that's gonna be the thing that's gonna force you to do it. Yes, totally, totally. Okay, now for the love, okay? Someone says, no question, I just need to say, I absolutely love your YouTube videos and your Facebook group. This is an honor that you're the first speaker at my first Grad School Success Summit and we get you live. So I wanted to let people know and there are some other just thank yous for this and how insightful it was and lots and lots of love. Oh, but there is one more question that I wanna ask and then there is a, a the, the one thing that people want to hear from you or get from you. Um, thoughts on when to start a TA or research assistant role? Is it, start, is it smart to start the first semester? And how would you work that into your goals and time prioritization? Hmm. Oh, that's an interesting question because I feel like most people have no choice. Like it's their funding that determines that they're going to be a TA. So a lot of people in my program, they were TAs from the beginning. Usually at first you're just a grader. Well, in math, so you're just grading things. And then after a semester or a year, then you get to teach. For me, I had a fellowship, so I didn't have any TA responsibilities for the first two and a half years. And then I was funded by a teaching assistantship. So I would say maybe if you are planning to teach after grad school and you don't have any opportunities for teaching, um, I would say ask to do it while you're doing your research and not when your coursework. Like if you have the choice, I would say try not to do your coursework and TAing at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. But the best way to pay for your, get your, your stipend or cover your tuition, do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So this got nine upvotes. Someone, uh, if people are interested in how to learn about your advisor meeting template. Oh, it's in my um, planner. So I have a free planner for grad students. Um, it's the academicsociety.com forward slash grad dash school dash planner. So you get the template in that. Okay. I'm thinking I'm gonna... Let's throw this in. Oh, you all can see the chat. Okay, so what we'll do is maybe we can add that um, in an email on the back end for you all, for you all to get that information. Um, if you all did not get your question asked, you all can follow Dr. Toya and send her a message. You can talk to her during the networking time, but let's give her a, you know, raise your hand. I know you can't really do anything else. Raise your hand and just show her some love and thank Dr. <laughs> like we see 30, 40, 50, 60 people raising their hand to give you an applause. Dr. Toyan, thank you so much for kicking off the summit and we will see you soon. Yes, thank you for having me and thank you everybody for the love. This is amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. Bye. Bye.